Hello, rocket builders. It's been a while, but I'm back in North America, so it's time to talk about building the fins for the Saturn 1B. Here we go. Remember folks, I've been certified to build and fly rockets up to level 3. If you don't have these qualifications, you might want to consider a simpler project and perhaps join one of your local or national organizations. Rocketry is a very safe hobby if you follow some very simple guidelines. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about fins. Now, unlike low power rockets where the fins are basically glued to the side of the body tube, with high power rockets we tend to use a technique called through the wall fins. In this technique, what happens is there's a extra long piece of the fin that extends from the outside body tube into the central motor mount. This gives it extra strength. We can fill it not just on where the fin attaches to the body, but also on the interior of the rocket as well. This gives it extra strength for the extra forces that are applied to the rocket as it's flying. When you're doing a scale model, you have to make a decision about how you're going to do the fins. For the full size Saturn 1B, the fins aren't the main method of aerodynamic stability. Uh, they are there, they do provide uh, some stability during the initial phase of flight, uh, but most of the stability comes from vectoring the uh, thrust out of the rocket motors. Um, so for the typical scale model, uh, the stability isn't what we need for a uh, flying model rocket. So you have some choices. You can do what's called sport scale, where you make the fins a little bit larger. So for example, with the Estes kits, that's what they do. The fins are larger than the, uh, than the scale would normally require. Uh, another way is to use the scale size fins and add extra nose weight. And that can again give you a uh, positive stability margin. That's what I've done with this rocket, although in retrospect perhaps some larger fins might have been a better idea. One of the problems you run into in high power flight is something called fin flutter. Now in this case their aerodynamic forces acting on the fins cause it to vibrate to the point of failure. That's a very bad day. To ensure we don't have fin flutter we run our fin design through a program called FinSim. And this takes the shape of the fins as well as the material into account to see if this is an issue we're going to have. Now the Saturn 1B, the real rocket, would have this issue as well. And as I run it through FinSim, we see that um, it's, it's not going to have any issues at the speeds we're going to be flying. In fact, it can fly much faster and still be solid. So that's a win for us. A common technique when building scale models is to build more than you need. So for example, the Saturn 1B has eight fins. Uh, I made 12. This allowed me to mess up on four of them, as I knew I would, uh, without having to start from the beginning. I actually had enough fins to complete the model. Um, this makes you uh, a lot more confident when you're building because you can, you have the leeway to mess up as, as things happen. Um, and as we'll see in, uh, as we go through, there were a couple that uh, weren't perfect and it allowed me to select the eight best out of the 12 and produce a good model. So our fins are going to use a composite build. At the core is a birch plywood portion uh, and this has the basic shape of the fin. So you can see in this diagram, not only does it have the through the wall portion that will attach to the center body tube, uh, but has the basic shape of the outside portion. Um, in the blank, I also have a little bit of a tab at the end, and we'll see how we use that in the construction of the fin. It allows us to do the shaping and manufacture, but will be removed a little bit later. So I tried making the fin just by cutting it almost to shape and then sanding it down, and uh, as it turned out, that was going to be a significant amount of work. So I did bite the bullet. I ordered out and got some laser cut fin shapes um, exactly to the size I needed and this saved me a lot of time and effort. Uh, I have since acquired a laser cutter but uh, haven't had it set up yet so uh, that'll be the subject of future videos. On top of that birch core we put balsa. 
Now this is a pretty thick balsa, it's about a quarter inch on either side, uh, but that brings it to the scale size for the actual fins. Now by putting balsa on each side, it allowed me to uh, create the shape of the fins. So if you look at the diagram for the Saturn 1B fin, you can see that it uh, decreases in width from the root to the tip. And if you look at it from the side, then there's also a decrease in width from the trailing edge to the leading edge. Now this is a pretty complex fin shape, but by putting the balsa on either side of the birch core, uh, this would allow me to sand it to shape fairly easily and still have a fairly lightweight fin. Now to sand it to shape, I did it in two steps. And this is where the extra tab on the outside of the uh, fin came in handy. Using guides made out of 3D printed plastic that fit on the uh, tab at the end of the fin, I was able to first sand from the root to the tip and give it that uh, decreasing width as you went out. Okay, so using those templates with a palm sander, I was able to uh, create the shapes fairly quickly. Um, doing that manually would have taken a significant amount of time and I started doing that but uh, the palm sander worked fairly well and I got good results. So now with the fin at the correct shape going from root to tip I had to look at the trailing edge to the leading edge. Now again I used a 3D printed uh, guide for this. Uh, you can see that there is a flat piece at the trailing edge and it fit over top of that and it allowed me to sand it from the actual width required at the trailing edge down to the leading edge. Now for the leading edge it wasn't a sharp point. Uh, I basically sanded it down to the width of the, uh, the balsa core. Once the balsa was sanded to shape I was able to remove the end portions on the fin and this would give it its final form except for the carbon fiber cladding. Okay so now we have 12 fins sanded to shape. The final piece was to put a coat of carbon fiber on this and I used two layers of carbon fiber fabric uh, as well as one layer of fiberglass on top of the carbon fiber. Now this is a common technique and the reason for using the fiberglass outer layer is it allows me some flexibility when sanding. If I do sand a little bit too much I'm removing fiberglass and not the carbon fiber. Uh, it's known as a sand through layer. Okay, so to put the carbon fiber onto the fins, it was done as a single piece that folded over the leading edge and went back along the length of the fin. Over that, I put the peel ply, as well as the, uh, the breather fabric, which would uh, absorb any of the excess um, epoxy during the uh, setting process. And uh, when it was all wet down and put into place, I put it into a food saver vacuum sealer uh, and that's just an inexpensive way of doing vacuum bagging. Um, so you can get that pretty inexpensively online and it works quite well as long as the size of what you're bagging isn't too large. Uh, so uh, John Coker has some videos explaining how that process is done so I will have a link to that below. But it's a pretty foolproof uh, way of making uh, very light and um, efficient carbon fiber clad fins. Okay, so how did it work out? Well, as you can see, out of the 12 fins, some of them did indeed get messed up. But by doing 12 instead of 8, I was able to select the 8 best, and I had 8 great looking fins that I was able to attach to my rocket. The result? Great looking fins. Okay, so this isn't a very long video, but the process of creating these fins took quite a bit of time. Uh, it's not something that I wanted to rush. Um, just in terms of the planning about how I was going to do it with the uh, 3D printed templates, with the, um, uh, the manufacture of even the birch core. Uh, it all took a fair amount of time. Um, so it's simple, it's easy, it's time consuming, it produces great results. So these are the fins. Next time I'm going to talk a little bit about 3D printing, how I made those templates and um, just general comments on 3D printing for rocketry, but until then, have fun flying.